why patrons put their chairs in certain spots. To get these seats here at the 18th hole, people wake up and get in line well before the sun comes up. And the difference between row three and row 10 could be a matter of seconds. That's right, Brad. Jenny, you can see behind me is Cell Charter School, but more is in the works. I talked with the superintendent who tells me just a few yards away. This hill behind me is going to come down and flatten and a brand new middle school will be built and ready next year. We also talked to one of the teens involved in this situation. She says she first learned about the organization when she saw this piece of paper posted in her neighborhood. It says part time job for teens. So she called the number you see here to get involved. He is a longtime member of the church and actually the principal of the school for many years as well. Joe, you saw it all go down. You were just right across the street. Tell me about it. So we saw a lightning hit uh, the transformer blue. I uh, saw you know, what looked like fireworks and thought the uh, you know, the next door at Comcast that the generators came on, saw some smoke. Hi, Mary. Yes, we are less than eight hours out from kickoff of the national championship. I'm just a few blocks north of the stadium. Check out all of the big rigs. We've got Harry's doghouse, and we also have a lot of Bulldog fans out here. It's only a few degrees above freezing, but they're out and they're ready to go, and I'm I'm joined with Lincolnton's own Billy McCorder, actually a former Bulldog mascot. Billy, I talked with you before the SEC championship game right here, and you're back. National championship. How's it feel? It's great. It's incredible. We're waiting a long time to be up here. What, what would it feel like for a Bulldog win? Words can't describe it. I don't even know what to say. What is this experience, this camaraderie with, with your friends, your family? You guys come out here all the time. What is this like? Man, it's incredible. Uh, everybody just rallies behind the Bulldogs. Uh, we're Bulldog faithful. We go wherever we can to support them. Heck, I was in Pasadena, California last weekend. Now I'm back in Atlanta. It's time to win it on our home soil. Well, Billy called the dogs on that plane ride out to Los Angeles, so we're going to have him do that and quit talking. Billy, how about you call the dogs? <laughs> Who's that coming down the track? Who's that coming down the track? It's a mean machine in red and black. It's a mean machine in red and black. Well, guys, we're just, again, less than eight hours from kickoff of the national championship game. The rain is holding up, and these guys are ready for a dog victory. We'll have more at 5 o'clock in our 30-minute special. Join us then. Back to you guys. The president will arrive in just a few minutes. Sean. And John and Dean, more than 1,300 people are expected to attend tonight's event here at Airport High School. Whoever Trump wants, that's who I'll vote for. Two choices. Warren. I think we're going to go with McMaster. I'd be voting for Warren. Hundreds turning out to West Columbia for a chance of a lifetime to see President Donald Trump. Because he's not a politician. He's looking out for us. The president making his way from the White House to the Palmetto State in a last-ditch effort to raise momentum in Governor Henry McMaster's favor. South Carolina Republican voters are choosing between McMaster and Greenville businessman John Warren in a runoff for the GOP gubernatorial nomination. The winner of the primary will face Democrat John Smith in the November general election. On the minds of the people who traveled near and far to see the president, immigration and the economy. I'm trying to hear from him on immigration. And uh, that's the big thing right now. And the economy, you know, talk about the economy, how great it's doing, how much unemployment is, how much, how well unemployment is. For one airport high school student, it's a chance to understand a different perspective. You know, honestly, the only reason I'm out here is to understand what the other side views and why they are here. We start at the end. The most coveted seat in the world today is a spot in front of the 18th green at Augusta National. The galleries filled security tallying chairs before sunrise is even over. Members have priority, so the first rows are taken before guards allow patrons inside. Chaz and Sam it's worth waking up early for it. got in the first non-member row. We drove from Greenwood, South Carolina. We got up at 345. Which landed them here around 5 a.m. They say there was already about 100 people in front of them waiting for the gates to open. But everyone's speed walking. Because even in the mad dash to the 18th, no running is allowed. So everyone's running into each other. His shoelace came untied. We were <laughs> tripping all over the place. Why get up so early to make it here? I mean, why is it worth it? See history. See Rory. <laughs> Win it. 
Yeah, we might get to see uh, the sixth career Grand Slam ever. So their spot choice is obvious. Another area that needs little explanation, Amen Corner. It was mesmerizing. For Hugo and James, these seats provide more than just beauty. We could see people coming in, teeing off, and then driving over. This tactic of positioning yourself between multiple holes is practiced by many. The balls are going to be coming right here. We get a chance to see this hole. We get a chance to see them tee off on the next hole. For Catherine Lucky, look at the pin placement today. Her spot is tradition. When we first started coming, there were no ropes, no anything. And we had a blanket here and a blanket on 18. Then they cut us down to one chair. And I just love nine. She sat along the walkway of the ninth hole every year for 51 years. To some, nine would seem kind of random. Why you love it? Sometimes it's won or lost on nine. No matter where you sit in the morning, the ninth, the twelfth, or the breakfast table, come Sunday evening, golf fans around the world watch the 18th hole as the 2018 champion puts on the green jacket. At the 2018 Masters at Augusta National Golf Club, Ashley Osborne, WJBF, News Channel 6. Aye. Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Just like that, construction at Plant Vogel is moving forward. The Public Service Commission says yes to Commissioner Tim Eckel's 16-part motion that states Vogel Units 3 and 4 should be completed. Oh, Georgia Power's attorney immediately accepted the new terms set by the commission. It's the commission's job to make sure this project, among others, balances the interests of utilities and the state as a whole. I certainly believe that the, the commission did reach a fair balance, that there were a uh, takeaways from the company. The commission voted to dock the allotted profit Georgia Power can recoup from money they invest in the project. That's your money they're investing, collected from your power bill each month. Going forward, the company's rate of return on Vogel construction will be docked from 10% to 8.3% starting in 2020, and then to 5.3% in 2021. However, the motion makes it clear that there is no cap for spending on the more than $20 billion project. If this project goes forward, with a blank check, people will suffer for many years to come. Commission analysts say the company is slated to make an extra $5.2 billion because of cost overruns so far. The commission says the measures they've put in place will reduce the revenue the company collects from your bills by about $1.7 billion. It's not clear how much of that is profit. The commissioners also voted to give customers three $25 credits on their bills over 2018. The average Georgia Power customer has paid about $100 a year for the project for several years. That rate is expected to increase when the reactors go online. And that charge will remain in Georgia Power customers' bills for the life of the project, 60 plus years. This is what I need to do for the rest of my life, and I want to be great at it. Greatness knows no age. It was the second shot on the par four at Torrey Pines. I had to hit it under a tree and cut it through a bunker. Very narrow. It's like threading a needle. Nine-year-old Luke Parsons executed that shot to win his second Junior World Championship. I love hitting hard shots under pressure. His memory and attention to detail are simply remarkable. The year he won at Piners, how many times did you play that course? 40 times? Yeah, 40. Yeah. Like we play it like 40 times to the point where we remember every single yard. And there's that triangle to the right. Luke's father, Tim, introduced him to golf when he was four and a half years old. I think part of it is just being obsessed with detail, like with me when I'm doing microsurgery. I like visualizing the putt going in. And now that methodical surgical approach has guided Luke to golf's howled grounds. I've never been to the Masters. But that changes on April 1st. Many pros play there and many people go there, but I'm actually going there to compete and win. That's right. Luke is one of 80 finalists who will compete in the fifth annual drive, chip, and putt competition at Augusta National. And the first from the CSRA. It means a lot to me. I mean, this is like a small golf course, and it, it feels great to represent it. We're 45 minutes from Augusta. And it's just phenomenal that we have a kid that plays and practices here that will compete to drive chip and put. Luke practices at Sweetwater Country Club in Barnwell, but his family moved from the Bay Area of California to Sally, South Carolina, five years ago. The staff at Pebble Beach said, really, the golf is southeast. The Medical College of Georgia and USC, they wanted me to come here as a consultant, and we looked right between those two spots, and it was Sally. 
Luke has certainly made his community proud, but it's a full-time gig playing over 80 tournaments a year as just a nine-year-old. Yeah, I think I took a day off on, on last year. It was Christmas. We played on my birthday, Did right? Play? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he has fun with his remote control cars and airplanes, yeah. and we balance things out. Check the wind. It's in my back and blowing glass. But when it's time to practice, it's time to practice. He is very serious about what he does. I mean, a lot of kids come out, want to drive the carts, have fun. He's focused about what he does. And it shows, especially in competition. Oh, too hard. Oh, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Yes! Close it right oh there. This kid's on goodness. <laughs> But it's only the beginning for young Luke, who expects to return to Augusta National down the road. I'm going there to compete and win. I think it, when I turn pro and I'm right there, I'm going to remember that moment. All the people that I've talked to are very positive about keeping this a part of our community. Pendleton King Park's future still up in the air, a dilemma felt community-wide. There you go. The park has been in a short-term lease with the city since January 1st. But Commissioner Dennis Williams, who represents the area, says it may be busier now than ever before. And people are showing their support and their desire for the park to remain a part of our community. And that's a very good thing because it shows the um, trustees, those that want to sell, the importance and how people feel about the park. According to the King Will, the 64-acre site is to remain a park in its entirety forever. After Queensboro Bank Trust Officer and a fellow trustee wrote up a contract to sell the park for $1.2 million in October, Augustans responded in disbelief. Now, a land swap is in the mix of possible solutions. Set, go. Nothing is concrete, but the plan is for Winchester home builders to buy the park, then donate it to the city of Augusta. In return, the housing development company would receive a tax credit and land with matched value to be developed. Commissioner Williams says above all, Mr. King's will should be honored. He did leave it for the enjoyment of other people in the community, and it was a part of his last uh, will. And so therefore, that's what it should be used for. He explains the city is not involved yet. We, as citizens of Augusta, want to maintain the park here. We will do our best to do what we can in order to make sure that it comes about. President Trump going all out for Governor Henry McMaster the day before the GOP gubernatorial runoff. Hundreds filled Airport High School in West Columbia on a rainy, steamy evening to listen to the commander's pick. The president spent much of the night tooting his own horn, touting about his accomplishments as president. He also addressed the ongoing debate about border enforcement and illegal immigration blasting Democrats. Trump gave a major endorsement to McMaster, whom he called a handsome guy and a fighter. Many people traveled near and far just to listen to the president. I think it's a giant step forward, just like going to the moon. You take it step at a time. Now we've, we've got the president in here. He strongly supports our president. Our governor does, Henry McMaster and it couldn't happen at a better time. Trump has delivered on everything he's ever promised, and uh, I think it's just gonna keep getting better and better. Trump didn't disappoint, even taking jabs at a former congressman. Katie, we're all pulling for you, and we're praying for your very swift recovery. She's gonna be back very soon. And she was with us, boy, she was out there campaigning against a guy I've never liked too much. him too much. I wasn't a big fan. The Tallahassee Trail must be a beautiful place. Unfortunately, he didn't go there. Protesters and counter protesters gathered outside several hours before the speech, something that didn't phase the president. His advice to anyone who's thinking about not voting tomorrow? Get your asses out tomorrow and vote. <laughs>